I am quickly going to reintroduce Thierry, who is uh, the uh, head enologist and also chief educator for the Alsace Wine Bureau. And his job is to roam around the world and France and teach all sorts of uh, targets, you know, whether consumers, students, uh, media, sommeliers. Um, he's there. He's done a lot in the US uh, with me. We, we've traveled ex extensively together. And uh, he's right now in Alsace at home, drinking Cremant and ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be with you. Uh, for, I can say tonight with you because it's nine, more than 9 p.m. in, in, in France. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be with you to talk about, about the, the Crémant d'Alsace. Um, as Stephanie mentions, I started to work for the, for, the, for the Alsace Wine Board Committee 25 years ago. And just for your, inform if, for your information, 25 years ago, the Crémant d'Alsace represented about, let's say, 13, 14 percent of the total sales of the Alsace wines. At the present time, it represents more than, well, well, let's say around 27, 27 percent. So it's booming. The, the Cremant is booming uh, in France and you know, on the export market. And it's, that's, and we will talk about the, the Cremant. I don't know, I don't know what you know about the Alsace. I don't know what you know about the Cremant d'Alsace. So, uh, please accept my humble apologize if I, I will talk about things you know, but I'm, my aim is also to talk about my own experience and to share with you my, my point of view of Alsace and the point of view of Cremant d'Alsace. And as uh, Stephanie mentioned before, uh, at the end, if you don't mind, we will keep all the questions for, for the end. And it will be my pleasure to, to, to try to, to answer all your, your questions at the end, if you don't mind. Um, uh, I don't know if you've already been to Alsace. Alsace is located in the northeastern part of France, uh, just near Germany. You have this small village. This is Kazental. You know, all the villages in Alsace are very small. All the, the, the vineyards are very concentrated. All the villages are very concentrated. Uh, and that's um, a, a part of Alsace, and a, a key point of, of Alsace. We are located in the northeastern part of France, and Alsace has already been um, always uh, been um, a land of passage. We've been influenced by well different countries: the Dutch people, the Swedish, the the. The, the Germans, of course, so the, 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 the Belgium, people from Belgium and so on. But you see this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, just between the Vosges and the Black Forest, this, this is a real passage. And uh, once again, we've been influenced by many, um, many countries. Um, Alsace is an amazing area because we have a special climate. Um, Climate, which is a semi-continental climate, with a very dry uh, spring, um, pleasant spring. And by the way, this I, I don't have. I don't have the the the, the, the figures in in um, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, but in, in Celsius it will be around thirty degrees Celsius in Alsace by the end of this week. So it's it's real summertime. So the spring are pleasant. <coughs> The summer might be sometimes very warm, very hot. The, the, the winter or very cold, minus 10, minus 15 degrees Celsius, so very cold. And the spring, uh, the, the folds are very interesting because we have a big difference between the days in terms of temperatures, between the days and the nights. And that's why it's possible to preserve freshness and fruitiness in, in the grapes. Um, very low rainfalls. For your information, Colmar, which is the, the capital of the Alsace wines, is one of the driest towns from France with Perpignan. Perpignan is located completely in the south part of France. We've, in, in Alsace, we have around 
at, at this point, I don't, I can't, I don't know if you can see my points. Uh, just let me see. Let, just let me know, uh, Stephanie. Can you see my pointer now? You can see it. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, awesome. In, in in Colmar here, we have about. 500 millimeters of rainfalls per year on the foothills between around 600 millimeters of rainfalls. On the other side of the verges, we have between two and three meters of rainfalls. From here, Colmar, to the other side of the verges, the distance is about 20, 30 kilometers. And we're completely protected from all the oceanic influences by the verges. And that's very important to explain the quality of our wines. Fruitiness, freshness, we, we are the reference of the white wines we're, because we produce 90% of white wines in Alsace, thanks to the climate, thanks to the facing also. We, all the vineyards receive the sun from the morning. And that's very important because we have a very low and, um, and um, not too fast, a slow, slow ripening. And that's, and that's why it's possible to preserve freshness and fruitiness, thanks to this facing. Um, so that's why all the grapes are fully adapted to the terroir of Alsace. Terroir could be another topic, maybe in a, for, for another um, Zoom, we, we could talk about the, 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 the terroir in the future, why not? In um, Alsace is an amazing region. We have a, an amazing culture. Um, I just wanted you to see these slides. Uh, maybe you're surprised to see the Liberty status, uh, statue, uh, but it has been created in Colmar. Bartholdi was born in Colmar. He lived in Colmar and created this statue. And by the entrance of the north part of Colmar, we have the same status. Uh, the Cathedral of Strasbourg, which was uh, during the Middle Ages, the highest building in Europe and even in the world. That's that just amazing. You see all these villages and all these houses, Colombage, um, all these, um, the, the foothills, the parcels. We have an amazing identity, uh, identity. But more than this, what is the most important thing in Alsace is we have families, people, uh, history, generation, and uh, what I've, we've written here, we, we are the stewards of the land for, for the next generation. And it's very common to see in, a, in, a, in, in wineries two, three generations working together. And you know, the most important people are not the oldest, but the youngest, uh, because they are, they, are, they, are, they represent the future. And the, the, the father or the grandfather just understood that they have to, to help the new generation to preserve the family and uh, to, to continue the business. Um, some wineries started in uh, during the 14th or 15th century. Dopf, uh, you may know this, this name, Dopf Moulin, uh, Ugel, Trimbach, Weinbach, and so on. They create, they are very, they have a very long history in Alsace. Families are really the soul of Alsace. We love to, to, to receive people and we, we love to, 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 to welcome people. And we have a very strong sense of hospitality. By the way, I know that Stephanie went to this uh, room in this kitchen. This is the Weinbach uh, kitchen. Uh, we had lunch over there and it's very common to, to be welcomed by the wine producers to, to share these traditional dishes like Pekaof and so on uh, in, in the kitchen. We love to once again to, 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 to receive people. Uh, I think I have, I find my way in this kitchen every year I go. <laughs> Somehow I end up in this kitchen. But I, I'm sure you will be back soon and I'm sure that we will we, we'll go there together. We'll have some choucroute over there or some tarte together with Catherine. I'm sure of that. Of that. Uh, we have also a strong identity. Uh, identity means culture, means accent, means history, means um, dialect also, uh, we have our own language, uh, which is more, it sounds more German than French, of course. We are 
But in the meantime, we are more French than the French people because we fight very hard to go back to France after the two wars. And thanks to the US army to help us to, to, to go back to, to, to France. But we have an amazing identity and we are very proud of it and we want to keep it. I think we, if you want to compare with some other French region, I would say Corsica has also this very strong identity with, uh, with others. Um, the other thing is that we're absolutely and definitely respectful of the environment. And that, that's not a new trend. Uh, it's not just because of the COVID, it's, just, it's not a marketing agreement. It's not, a, how can I say, uh, we, start, we are the pioneer of organic and biodynamic in Alsace, in France. We started during the uh, 60s. Uh, Mr. Meyer, in the south part of Alsace, uh, decided to, to turn, to, to, to go to, 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 to produce wine and grapes and wine on, on biodynamic because he, he, he understood just, he, he wanted to, to, to respect the environment, he wanted to respect the workers also, and he wanted to respect also the consumers. And that's very important. So once again, this is not a, a marketing uh, way, but it's, it's more a way of life. And some wineries very famous uh, used to, to produce on organic and biodynamic, but they were not certified. But for them, it, they couldn't produce, they can't produce grapes or wine without organic and biodynamic, but now they're certified because the, the, there is a demand of the market to, to, to show on the label that they are certified. But they used to work like that for, for years and years. And more than 35% of the vineyards are certified on organic and biodynamic certified or in conversion. Just to, to give you uh, some figures, in, in Alsace, we have more companies who are certified than Germany. Alsace is a very small region. We have 35,000 acres of vineyards in Alsace. So we are very small regions, but we have more companies certified in organic and biodynamic than Germany. That's just amazing. So, um, as I mentioned before, we, are, we, want to, to, we want to be the reference of the white wines because we produce 90% of white wines. Um, and on this slide, I, I try to summarize the Els wines. We have seven main varieties um, with here the richness and over there the freshness. And as you can see, we produce all the white wines you might expect. Do you want some light? and fresh wine, we have the Sillonaire and the Muscat d'Alsace, or the Pinot Blanc. Do you want something full-bodied? We have the Gevers Raminaire, very rich, with a discreet acidity, with some bitterness on, on the aftertaste. The Riesling, which is, a, I could do, honestly, I could do a lecture just for hours, just about the, the Riesling, because I'm a fan of Riesling, but that's not the topic today. Maybe next week, when we, we, we could do um, this, this lecture, in, uh, another moment. Uh, and Pinot Gris, uh, well-balanced wine, uh, both freshness and richness. Uh, but on this slide, unfortunately, I can't work on 3D. One dimension is missing, the, the, the aromas. And just imagine that the axe of the aromas comes to you. And in this case, the Gevers Saminer and Muscat will be in France because they are the most concentrated. They have the biggest concentration of primary aromas. And so in a very small region, very small region, tiny region, you find all the white wine you might expect. And that's a real chance. We have also a lot of terroir, a lot of soil. So once again, I don't have time to, to develop this, but we have, a, 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 it's a real, uh, give me one type of soil, you will find it in Alsace. And that's just amazing. amazing. Drawing a geological map of Alsace is just impossible. Honestly, because we have 13 different types of soils. But freshness, bubbles, and crème d'Alsace. Excuse me, I'm thirsty. Crème d'Alsace, um, rosé. 
Colonel Sass, as I mentioned before, represents more than 25, 26, 27 percent of the, the production. We started, we have three types of appellation in Alsace. The classic house Alsace, and for this appellation, that's the largest production, 20, uh, 70 percent approximately. And for this appellation, we are mainly looking for the taste of the grapes. And after the, we have 51 different Grand Cru. And for these appellation, we're looking for the minerality of the soils. And we have our sparkling wine, Crémant d'Alsace, 25, 26, 27%. It depends on, 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 on the vintage. Um, created in 1976. So that's quite late, by the way. But you must know that the first Crémant, which has been produced in Alsace, has been done, produced in the beginning of the um, 19th century, uh, 20th century, excuse me, with, uh, by Mr. Julien Dopf. During this time, we were German, and a lot of um, uh, champagne companies were based in, Al in Alsace because we were German, and there, was, there were no um, custom duties uh, to, to, to send wine in Germany because we were German. And during the, the Universal Exposition in Paris, Mr. Julien Dopf uh, discovered the method, uh, tradition, or the method champenoise, so the second fermentation in bottle. And when he came back to Alsace, he said to his father, well, that could be interesting to produce this type of wine, sparkling wine. I'm sure that there will be a big demand. And he started to produce this. And for the history, for your for information, he sent some bottles. He sent some bottles to Australia and back to see the how they evaluate with the uh, transportation. And when they came back, they tasted the wine, and the wine was just excellent. So they decided to continue. And when we came back to France at the end of the First World War, some wineries decided to continue. Of course. The, the champagne companies went back to Champagne, but in Alsace, we continue to produce some sparkling wine, Dove Fougoulin, Dove Firion, um, Volberger, uh, Albrecht, some uh, Villem. You know this company because they export a lot of the wines in, in to the US. So they, we, we started to produce this, this sparkling wine, but in fact, we obtained the, 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 the OC status only in 1976. That's quite late, by the way, but you know, in France, everything takes time, uh, with, especially with the administration. And at the present time, uh, last year, we produced uh, 35, 34 million bottles in 2021, and that represented 27% of the Alsace production. What is important to say is that we have, in France, you will find different type of Cremant. Alsace, Jura, uh, Savoie, Burgundy, Crémant de Die, Limoux, Bordeaux, and Loire. But more than half of the French Crémant is Crémant d'Alsace. We are the leader of all the region, the, the eight region which produce Crémant. More than 50% are Crémant d'Alsace. And from the, 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 the appellation, um, if we talk about bubbles, first in France, first we drink champagne, and after the second wine, which is drunk in, in France, is Crémant d'Alsace. Why? Because quality, good value for money, uh, we, people are looking for. There's a, a real trend in France. Uh, people want freshness, bubbles, white wines, and uh, good value for money. And the Crémant d'Alsace is exactly the good partner uh, for that. Um, in front, in Alsace, we have, uh, when you visit a winery, a winery um, I always suggest people to have a look on the, on the wine list. And people are surprised, always surprised to see that the wine list is very large, very long, because you have, we will find, even if you visit a very small, um, uh, wine producer, you will have you will find 20, 25, 30 different references on the wine on the price list. Um, because we have some grapes, different appellations, and so on. But if we have a lot of range of still wine, we have also an amazing range of 
sparkling Cremant because we can we, we are sparkling wine. We can use different wine um, grape varieties. The first wine and the base is Pinot Blanc, what I call the real Pinot Blanc. The, the Pinot Blanc belongs to the family of Pinot, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, and it's uh, it brings freshness, delicate. That's the base for all the Cremant. Um, and after you can, we have also some Auxerrois, which is a little bit more, which has more roundness, which more uh, more concentrated, uh, concentrated wine. And most of the time, we blend, um, uh, yes, six 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 grapes and not five. Uh, well done, uh, six different grapes. But most of you know, uh, sometimes people confuse Pinot Blanc and Auxerrois, but that's a mistake. But never mind. Uh, Oxyawa um, has more depth and more roundness. Riesling, Riesling, once again, I could talk about the Riesling for hours. Riesling brings um, freshness, a, a backbone acidity, a very thin, very sharp, very, uh, uh, yes, a backbone acidity. And that's, that's amazing. And all the Cremant produced with um, 50 or 100 percent of Riesling, you can write Crément de Riesling, Crément de Pinot Gris, or Crément de Chardonnay, if you have 100% of Riesling, 100% of Pinot Gris, or 100% of Chardonnay. But in this case, the Crément de Riesling, for this type of Riesling, we are looking, for, um, we, we will use it, we will drink it more with some seafood, but I will talk about that later. Pinot Gris, that's the most red white wine we produce in Alsace. Richness, roundness, uh, smoky aromas, um, uh, concentrated, well, very large and very rich, but of course with bubbles. Uh, Chardonnay. Chardonnay is allowed in Alsace just for the Crémon d'Alsace only. It, you, we used to produce some Chardonnay for the, we used to use the Chardonnay for the system to produce some steel wine, uh, but that was before the, the, the AOC Alsace Grand Cru, so before uh, 1975. But when you created the, the, the the, the Grand Cru status, we decided that Chardonnay just for, uh, for the, for the Cremant. And that's a, a good thing, by the way, uh, because Chardonnay for me is not, I would say a good representative of the Alsace wines. Uh, it hasn't a lot of primary aromas. It's not so exuberant. Chardonnay will bring uh, something creamy, something supple, something, uh, uh, to some toasted breads, brioche, and so on to the wine and to the Cremant d'Alsace. Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir, that's the only red we have in Alsace. Another, that could be also another topic, uh, another lecture, another Zoom if you want, but Pinot Noir is allowed in Alsace and we use it to, to produce what we call Blanc de Noir, or some Cremant Rosé. And that's a difference with the Champagne, by the way, because in Champagne, to, when you produce, when you drink, um, or when you want to produce a, a creme, a Champagne Rosé, you can blend a steel wine and um, a white wine and a red wine, excuse me. Uh, in Alsace, we have to use just Pinot Noir. So it's, this one has been produced with uh, uh, a small, a very short maceration and pressed immediately to obtain this very uh, small and uh, very light uh, red or light rosy um, color. Um, and for the Cremant, uh, Cremant de Pinot Prino Noir, uh, for the Cremant Rosé, uh, a lot of um, red fruits and some tannins. And once again, that, that's why we use it mainly for the uh, for, for, for the foods in for the and for the dessert, but I will talk about that later. Uh, we don't vintage most of the time. We don't vintage the the the, the, the Cremant, like in Champagne. Uh, we have some brut nature. The the scale of um, of Cremant d'Alsace is exactly the same like in Champagne. Extra brut, brut, demi sec, sec, and so on. So we, it's exactly the same. Um, uh, that's it. Uh, next, because I see the time, is, time flies, uh, some technical info, uh, information, maximum yields, uh, manual harvest, of course. Uh, we can't use any machine, fortunately, uh, and we want to, 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 to preserve that. To, to, and, you know, to produce a crément, 
we always start the harvest by picking up the grapes to produce Crimon because we're not looking for very high maturity. We can, after the second fermentation, the Crimon mustn't have more than 13% of alcohol. So that's why we pick up, we are looking definitely for freshness uh, and acidity and we pick up the grapes around 10 to 11% of potential of alcohol, of alcohol uh, approximately and 8.5% of potential alcohol is definitely the minimum. But most of the time, and also due to the global warming, and that could be another topic, uh, it's more around 10 to 11%. Traditional methods, traditional, we can't call it method Champenoise, Champenoise method, that's forbidden by law since 1994. Uh, and the, my colleagues of Champagne are very strict on that. Uh, I don't know if you know this story. Uh, uh, LVM, um, um, I can't remember who, who was uh, the, a perfumer, decided to create um, a perfume and he called it Champagne. But my, my, my colleagues of Champagne uh, called this producer and said, no, you can't call it champagne because champagne is just for the for the white wines. Also, um, there is a, a small village, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, it was Yves Saint Laurent, uh, and there is a small village in, in, in Switzerland, which is called Champagne, and they have 200 hectares of vineyards, and they are, it's forbidden for them to, to write just Champagne Switzerland on the, on the label. Uh, that's they are very strict on that, and that's why we we, we call it just seven, um, traditional method and Crémant d'Alsace. The name Crémant, by the way, the name Crémant comes from 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 Champagne because they use uh, in Champagne they use this name this word Crémant when they missed they failed for the second fermentation. In in Champagne, the the aim is to obtain in the bottle of the second fermentation bit around six bars of pressure. In Alsace, it's more 4.5 bars of pressure. Um, in, uh, and when they failed the second fermentation, instead of calling champagne, they used to call it crément de champagne, crément de cramant. And as they improved the second fermentation, they didn't use anymore the word crément d'Alsace, crément, excuse me. And that's why they said, okay, we don't use anymore this word, Cremant, so we give it to you, but forbidden, you can't call it the method, method champenoise. Please just use traditional method. And that's, that was just a discussion between the two regions and we obtained, and that's why we, it was possible to continue to, to produce uh, Cremant d'Alsace. We don't want to compete with Champagne. Champagne is Champagne, Cremant is Cremant. Crémant d'Alsace is Crémant d'Alsace. When you buy a bottle of, of champagne, you don't buy a bottle of wine. You buy a bottle of champagne. When you buy a bottle of Crémant d'Alsace, you buy a bottle of wine. Once again, we have an amazing, once again, because we have, we can use different grapes and we have an amazing range of different sparkling uh, wine in Alsace. Food pairing. I love food pairing. Um, well, uh, of course, you, you, for the Crémant Blanc de Blanc, uh, made with Chardonnay or Pinot Blanc, uh, that's a reception wine for the uh, for the for, yeah, for some toast from for some uh, starters and uh, uh, but that's just more more for the aperitif. But when we talk when when you drink of uh, Crémant the, the uh, Pinot Gris with more fatness, this underwood notes, dead leaves, mushrooms, uh, something smoky also with some foie gras with some game and it's also interesting popcorn especially with truffle salt. Uh, um, Crémant de Pinot Gris with, uh, with, the, the, with the popcorn is just uh, uh, gorgeous. Uh, Ostias, salmon tartar, all the seafood with Crémant de Riesling because of the uh, backbone acidity, the, 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 the freshness. Uh, we had what we do quite often uh, at my office, uh, we do some uh, cheese and, and, and wine pairing. Um, when you have something very creamy, uh, triple creme, uh, chaours, 
uh, and so on with some uh, uh, criminal Alsace. It's very interesting because there's a reaction um, between the, 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 the creams and the bubbles. The, the bubbles will boost all the creams, and that's interesting. Um, and of course, delicious, at, as it's written, delicious on its own. Uh, when you want to share a glass with, uh, with, with someone, just a bottle of champagne or glass of champagne. Oh, excuse me. God, it's, it's, it's nine, it's nine uh, thirty. Uh, uh, a glass of uh, Clément d'Alsace is just, uh, just uh, perfect. Uh, to, to when you want to talk with uh, with some uh, friends, um, well, that's that's it. I'm well, I think 30, 30 minutes. Um, uh, I don't know if you have any questions. I, I, I would love to 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 ask you your, your questions. I've seen that there's some discussions over there, but uh, so you, if you want to unmute yourself. Oops, someone entered. Sorry, I haven't seen that. If you want to ask questions or say anything, feel free to unmute yourself. I think you can do it if you want to. I'm going to just. Oh, so I just see that someone stayed in, in Riboville. Wow, it's a very yes, nice job. Jeff, yes. Jeff said Jeff, that. Yeah, you yes, said absolutely. in Riboville. Uh, and um, in, in my version, I had translated the Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let me tell you what it is. Five Celsius is 41. So you serve it between 41 and seven is 44.6. So between 41 and 46 is the temperature, ideal temperature. Um, first, in uh, first after first bubbly after champagne in, in sales, in consumption, of course, in France, uh, not exportation, not popularity, but consumption. Uh, and so that means that means uh, sales, and uh, of course you you, you will receive the the, the presentation. Um, uh, Stephanie will send it to you. Uh, I'll send it to Jill, and Jill will send it to everyone. Yeah, uh, and the name of the pioneer in the, on organic. I will I will send you this this information. We have a, a communicate press uh, press press release about that. I will send it to you, Stephanie, and uh, you will. Yes, please. I yeah. you know I've never uh, met him, so is he still alive? Oh yes, of course. He works on all Biden. He, he, he no no he is uh, he is uh, located in um, near Auschwitz. In the south part okay. of yeah. yeah, great. No I have a Love I have a question. Oh, thanks. Um, so you had mentioned that for Cremant Alsace that um, uh, four and a half bar versus six bar for the pressure is that a maximum? Is that typical? Is there is there a range? I, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I, I didn't hadn't realized that it had a different um, pressure. Well, it's, uh, I would say that it's um, the way we produce Cremant. In Champagne, they are around six bars. Mm -hmm. uh, but once again, we don't want to copy Champagne. We don't want right. to compete with Champagne. You understood that, I hope so. Uh, but no, in Alsace, we have something light in terms of uh, wine. So that's why the aim is around 4.5 bar or five bars of pressure. We are not looking for the six. Six bar. It's uh, that's a general uh, general trend, I would say, in terms of production. Is there? Can I follow on with that? Different, different, uh, slightly different topic. Um, dosage. Um, is there? I'm just curious if there are recent trends in dosage, one way or the other. Ah, uh, in terms of dosage, I would say that the, the, we produce mainly brut or extra brut, I would say. And the, the trend is to produce drier and drier wines in general. Uh, so the, 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 the sec and demi sec, we, we, that represents the very, very, it, we used to produce that, but more and more we produce more extra brut, I would say, because that's a general trend. Uh, I don't know if it in, in, in the USA, but in France and in Europe, people want more and more dry wines because they want to do, do they understood that it's much easier to, to pair this type of wines with some food uh, in general. Um, and by the way, uh, for all the steel wines in classified in our cells, us, 
uh, by law for the with the vintage 2021 we will have to write by law on the label dry half dry uh, uh yeah. demi -sec, right. second demi sec mm -hmm. i don't know if you know that, that that's the european law but uh, once again for, for the creme d'alsace extra brut or brut mainly okay. thank you you're welcome Some other, I uh, just want to. Uh, the, the, the other thing is about the Cremant is, uh, sorry if I insist on that, is the, the, the value of money. It's a very good value of money. Um, uh, for, for all the, um, for all the, all, all the, 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 the companies we, export to the USA you will find a very very good very good quality for for for, for a very good price um, once again we don't want to compete as I said mentioned before we don't want to compete with champagne because champagne is champagne uh, but uh, uh, I know that some some years ago a company a cop this time uh, competes with um, blind tasting doing blind tasting and they they won, in fact, the competition with the Cremant d'Alsace. Uh, they, they, they won, compete with, with champagne producers. And they, how do you say, how do you say this? They, they won, yes, they just won the competition uh, because they, they, once again, it was a blind tasting. But uh, remember the taste, remember the, the, the good value for money for the Cremant d'Alsace. Yes, on the West Coast, by the way, it's a very good, very interesting market for us in the US. Uh, California, especially, and the, and the West Co and the East Coast also. Um, but we have a lot of stock, so continue to buy. It's it's not that's not a problem. Basically everywhere, West Coast, everywhere, mm -hmm. Central. You know, yeah, we just love our bubbles <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> right, yeah. so the Cremant d'Alsace sales have boomed, like all the other bubblies in the US. It's a category yeah. that's been growing tremendously, mm -hmm. and. At this price point, you can find easily a very good. I always say you can find a very good Cremant d'Alsace for twenty five dollars, and you mm -hmm. can find a very crappy champagne for forty. <laughs> so <laughs> guess where I go? Um, but yeah, it's a really. You, good you mentioned that I didn't. You mentioned that. So thank you. I did. I did. <laughs> Ask. I have another question for you. Um, yeah. So, um, in, in, well, not recent years, but for quite some time, there's been, um, uh, you know, a trend towards more grower champagnes. Is there, I'm, I'm only familiar with larger producer Cremant d'Alsace that makes it here. Is there also a, a, a trend towards uh, growers producing their own Cremant? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, they... Uh, but sometimes it's more difficult for them because the quantity is 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 uh, smaller than the um, than the big cup or the big wine merchants. But a trend we can see now in in Alsace is as you have some uh, Lyodi still wine, you can find now also some Lyodi Cremant d'Alsace, and um, so we. Well, it's it's not a real trend, but we start with this uh, to produce to to find some um, how can I say some terroir crément, and that's that's interesting. That's uh, I'm not saying that in the future. I, well, I didn't say that. Okay, you don't. I didn't mention that that we will produce some uh, uh, crément grand cru, or cru, crément premier cru, and so on. I didn't mention that. But I think that some, well, I just noted that some wine producers produce this type of uh, located uh, Cremant de Lieu, Cremant de Lieu, uh, because they think that the terroir in some areas, the Cremant, uh, uh, the, the, the grapes are definitely suitable to, to or perfect to, 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 to produce a special Cremant. And uh, uh, there is a winery in Alsace which produce just Cremant, Boucher. In 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 uh, in Wittelsheim, the south part of uh, south part of uh, Alsace, uh, they produce just Cremant d'Alsace. It's just specialized in in Cremant, and it's a very small company. Uh, so 
when we talk about Crema, it's not just the big companies, it's all the wineries. And actually, uh, Jeff, all of you are getting uh, one small producer, so we're sending three samples. And all of you are getting a, a Brut Nature from a small producer and then two larger producers. Uh, so, and I'm happy to send a list of uh, the small producer we know have wines here. It's just hard to find them uh, in quantity. <laughs> so when we do big shipments, we, uh, we go to a store where there are more than three bottles or four bottles. <laughs> but uh, we, we have a list, we have their name and uh, be happy to share that with you. I'm, I'm, I'm the only one who has a glass. Come on. I have water. It's too uh, early. Have water. Come on. <laughs> I still have work to do. So. <laughs> Come on. Okay. It's... Oh, Gwendolyn has a glass. No, don't you? No, you don't. <laughs> no, no, okay. but, no, it's, it's, uh, but they will all soon uh, get it, there. It's quarter to ten for me, so it's normal. I, I can have a glass now. It's it's not. Well, that's thank not you, problem. Thierry, for uh, staying no, late yeah, with us and telling okay, us all okay. about the. The Cremant yeah. category, I've learned a couple of things, actually, so I'm totally oh. happy about that. Yeah, right? Well, in the future, if you want to organize something about the Curusling, about the terroir, about the Pinot Noir, about... We have We're going to so do that many, every year. We're going to do a different topic. We have so and, uh... many topics, <laughs> so many information for you. So please do not hesitate. It will be my pleasure to help you and to to talk with you and to share with you my knowledge and my more than my knowledge, my region, Alsace. Okay. Thank you thank, all. Thank you so much. much. Have a thank good you. afternoon. Thank you, Jill, for organizing this. Bye. My, my, my pleasure. Thanks for being here, everyone. A bientôt. Thank you. A bientôt. Merci beaucoup. Bye.